generals, whoever, people was, they followed him. So what was his son hurt over 25 years? When he got about 15 and he understanding a little bit more, do you think he might have been thinking like, yo, this is this crazy. But I'm still going to the festival to the God Astaroth when my daddy say, yo, boy, get in the car. We going at the Astaroth feast. I mean, yeah, I'll get in the chariot, son. <laughs> get in the chariot. This the prince. You thought he would. No, I'm going to keep my son home, keep him away from my pagan lifestyle. No, he with me. He being groomed to be the next king when I'm gone, right? Come on, son. We going to go sacrifice to such and such. And every time you ride through Jerusalem on your way to another city, this the chariot moving over the rocks. He just looking at the temple, closed up. Ain't nobody been in that joint in years. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Bows and Pass is looking at the temple. Well, nobody going there. Grass growing up on the side. Weeds coming up through the stones. <laughs> Doors boarded up. It's real, right? Still got that big, super dumb altar my daddy built standing in front of the joint. And we ain't stopping here. Everybody going here. But he ain't got no choice but to grow up in it, right? You ain't got no choice but to do what your mom and your daddy say as a child. So he did it. But now it's his turn. What are you going to do? Go ahead. He was 25. And he reigned nine and 20 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. He in the first year of his reign in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. He got to work immediately. First year, first month, he ain't even been king for 30 days. Yo, man, open up the house of the Lord and get this thing in order. Go ahead. And he brought the priests and the Levites and gathered them together into the east street and said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place for our fathers have trespassed and done that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord our God and have forsaken him and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord and turned their backs also they have shut up the doors of the porch and put out the lamps and have not burned incense nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the God of Israel Wherefore, the wrath of the Lord is upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he hath delivered them to trouble, to astonishment, and to hissing, as ye see with your eyes. For lo, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons, and our daughters, and our wives are in captivity for this. Mm, mm, mm. Go ahead. For it is in mine heart to make a covenant with the Lord, God of Israel, that is fierce, that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. My sons, be not now negligent, for the Lord has chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, that ye should minister unto him and burn incense. Just because we get in our evil and change things don't mean that what God want done has changed. He said, my sons, now he 25. He probably talking to some cats older than him too. My sons, be not negligent. Get to it. Yo, let's change this thing. Our fathers have been neglectful. His daddy, y'all daddies, all have put us in this situation. And this is the reason why wrath has come upon Judah and Jerusalem. So how long do you think he knew this if he did this in the first year, in the first month? Not to mention all the stories he probably heard by the priest and people just wanted to live up right how it was, how his forefather David was in the kingdom. All he've heard during, I, I, just walking up to listen, it was never like this years ago. It wasn't like this years ago. That's a great point. You know, The law being read, they understood. He had understanding. He didn't just come up with that in his first 30 days of, uh, of being king. Yeah. All while his daddy was doing this, his daddy done turned to other gods because he think he need to follow them because that's the reason why his enemies beating him. So successful. But his son like, Dad, you bugging. We in this position because of what you doing. 
Turn back to the Lord and it's a turn. I know it's mine by his action. Because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. But also, out of the abundance of action, the heart speak also, brothers and sisters. His action proved what mind he was of. He immediately is changing and deciding to not walk in this path his father has set for him. Even though he probably participated. And these priests who got to get things in order participated with their daddies in the pagan worship. God will choose to have mercy. He know our position. You can't use what your daddies have done as an excuse to explain or justify your evil. Just take your evil as your evil and get it right. That's what we all have to do. Even though my dad wasn't there, I'm still not going to give the adversary the satisfaction of believing. I'm going to try to go ahead and live a lascivious life because I ain't had no daddy around and my mama was forced to be looking for love all her life and I just never liked that. No, what I have done, I've married a beautiful sister when I was young. You understand? In my early 20s, 23, 24 years old, I'm marrying because I don't want to be stuck in what I seen my mother do and what I seen my fathers do. And my dad, if he done left me, he probably didn't have more kids somewhere too. I am ending that here. I made that decision 11 years ago, almost 12, still going strong, all credit due to God. That's just one thing. And all of you have some kind of testimony of something you may have done that you like, yo, I'm starting to walk this, man, because it's the opposite of what my daddies did and what our mothers did. Because of their weakness, I had to grow up like this, but I'm changing it with me through the will of God in me. I'm telling you, we got decisions to make. So we seen what this king did, right? This is Hezekiah. Now, brother, if you would, skip down to chapter, I mean, to verse 24. Verse 24. No, you know what? We ain't got to do that. Let us go into 2 Kings chapter 20. We, we, got, we, got, we got to just, he walked opposite, right? Ezekiel said, if the son, if the, if the father did all this wickedness, but his son consider and decide to go another way, I'm going to bless his son for the righteousness he do. I'm not going to make him live the rest of his life paying for what his daddy did. But you will live the rest of your life paying for what your daddy did if you walk the same path as your wicked daddy. Yeah, you can be 40 like, man, this is how I am because of what my daddy's did. But yeah, you ain't did nothing to change you. I know what your daddy did, but what have you done to change you so you can stop paying for him? Go ahead, brother. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 12. At that time, Berdox Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present unto Hezekiah, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. Now remember, Hezekiah had fell real sick and was almost dying. And the Lord had mercy upon him and healed him and gave him 15 more years of life. So now his friend, the king of Babylon, has heard that he's feeling better and that he's not going to die. So he sent him a gift. Y'all, I'm glad you're all right. Get what, you know. Glad you recovered, Kyrie, if you will. One of them Hallmark kind of joints from Babylon. <laughs> Go ahead and look at what happens. And Hezekiah hearkened unto them and showed them all the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armor and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Mm. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto king Hezekiah and said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country, even from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All the things that are in mine house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. 
And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah,